Hello, and welcome to the Mark Baxter Show, where empowerment is unlimited. Before we get started, I just want to send a special shout out to Trayvon Martin's family. Just hopes that justice will eventually be served. And just to tell everybody to stay encouraged and keep his family in your prayers. The Mark Baxter Show. Here we go again, peoples. We are so elated and thankful for all of the support, the responses. People actually call us and write us about how the Mark Baxter Show is really impacting and changing their lives. Not only is it impacting your lives, but it's impacting mine as well. So I thank you and I encourage you to keep watching because we have tremendous shows in store for you. We have tremendous interviews in store for you and we're sure that you'll continue to be inspired, encouraged, and motivated to live a high impact life. As you all know, show one, just in the review, we discussed a lot of things. In particular, problems, strengths, and weaknesses. I define problems as those abrupt things that happen in and throughout our lives that we just don't prepare for. Those flat tires, loss of keys, conflicts with spouse, those things that you just don't plan for that just abruptly happen. Strengths, we all know what these are. These are the things that we pride ourselves in, the things that we love to promote, the things that we're just good at regardless of what happens. We're just good at it. naturally, we're good at it. And weaknesses, these are the things that we all try to camouflage, we try to hide so that we don't feel exposed. But in essence, instead of promoting our strengths, we really should promote and embrace our weaknesses. I know it sounds strange, but if you're already strong at something, then your proficiency level is really, really high, maybe 80, 85%. So look at the small window for growth. There's not a lot of room, 10, 15%. Look at where you are in your weaknesses. You're not real proficient, maybe 20, 25%. Look at the large room for growth potential when you discuss your weaknesses and you deal with your weaknesses. You're only as strong as your weakest link. So do better, people, and show two. The audience asked me a lot of questions about my life, and I answered them. A lot of these questions were very personal. I questioned answering them initially in my mind, but I said, let me give you all that's in my heart because I owe it to you. We set a precedent when we first sought out to do this Mark Baxter show. We said this is going to be the realest show on TV. We're not going to hold anything back from you because you need everything that we got so that you can do the best that you can do. After I answered the questions in show two, I went into a true life story about me growing up and experiencing a lot of disappointment. People around me would always make plans and set goals and agendas. Not only didn't they follow through on the goals and agendas, they didn't even care to give a reason why they didn't follow through on it. Almost as if they just said things in vain with no intent on really making it happen. Well, I always had a problem with this as a young kid. I never wanted to be a talker and not a doer. So I label these people dreamers, the people that say things that they really don't intend on doing. I never wanted to be this way. So I actually tried to get myself in a position where I didn't even dream anymore because I wanted to be so far fetched from these dreamers that I didn't even want to dream myself. Be sure if you haven't watched show two, go back and watch show two. It's a great show and it's very insightful. Show three, we discussed balancing your life. In particular, controlling the controllables. What this means in short is, don't worry about or focus on the things that you can't control. This is the key to getting the edge in life as I discussed in show three. When you're faced with things that you can't control, traffic, you know, job situations, things like that, don't spend time and energy focusing on that. When you're faced with a controllable situation, being on time, demonstrating good character, giving and receiving love, bang, go all out on the controllables. This is how you get the edge. Well, people, this brings us up to today's show. Today's show is going to focus on maximizing 
and conquering systems. Why systems, Mark? What are we going to do with systems? Well, systems is very important. In show three, I told you to look at your life and identify controllable aspects and non-controllable aspects. But I told you it's quite difficult to do when you look at your whole life in totality. What you need to do is break your life down into aspects, into systems. That way it's simplified and it gives you more of an opportunity to be successful in recognizing the controllables and non-controllables. So today we're going to talk about systems. I'm going to give you 10 steps to maximizing and conquering a system. Now, what you don't know people, and I knew this and my team knew this the whole time, these first four shows are all connected. What we sought out to do in these first four shows is to give you a framework of a powerful foundation for success. My whole purpose in the Mark Baxter show of talking to you one-on-one -on, -one on these first four shows was merely to get you acquainted with me, Mark Baxter, and also to show you that I'm qualified and I have the tools to empower and motivate you and help you to live a high impact, high quality life. It's only fair to you for me to first define systems and that standpoint that I mean when I discuss systems. Systems can be defined as a coordinated body or method or schemes or plan of procedure. I'll say it again a coordinated body of methods or a scheme or a plan of procedures. In, in short, a system is any and everything in your life. How you get up, your morning routine, your routine as far as going to work, your job in general, relationships, your family, your car, everything encompasses a system. So this is what I want you guys to do. Sit back, listen, and take in what I'm going to give you because what I'm going to give you is very powerful and it's going to help you solidify the foundation that you need when you follow the Mark Baxter Show so you can continue to grow and continue to flourish and continue to be motivated to live a high-impact life. Here's an example of why you need a strong foundation. See, if you build a house, right? You can build it with wood, of course, it's available to you, but I encourage you to build your house with bricks. See, it may take a little longer, but one thing that we can't avoid is adversity. So if you build your house with wood, you could be on the third floor. When that adversity comes, the wood breaks because it's not a solid foundation. So you go all the way down to the first floor. Now look at what happens after that. You're so desperate because you feel like you're missing time. You're behind the eight ball. So now you build it even faster. You get the wood, you're skipping steps, you're building it. It's not solid, it's unstable. Every time that adversity comes, you're all the way down to the first floor. Your counterpart on the other side is taking them a little longer, putting the cement in between the bricks, but he's building this house with bricks. So if he's on his third floor with brick, when an adversity comes, it'll puncture it a little. He may even drop down the floor, but he's not going down to the first floor. So the guy that's building his house with bricks, he's more encouraged to continue building. Whereas the guy building his house with wood, he's going super fast now, passing the guy with bricks. But every time the adversity comes, he goes all the way down to the bottom. Here's the question, audience. How many times will you disregard your foundation, the very thing that supports you during your fall, in which we all do fall, how many times will you fall all the way down before you finally decide to build your house with bricks? That's what the Mark Baxter Show is here to do. It's here to show you from a systematic standpoint of how to build your house with bricks so you and your family can live happily ever after. Okay, number eight, identify ways to improve the system. I don't care how effective any system is, they all need improvement. 
And if you can bring some kind of progress to a system, then you'll definitely be welcome. All right. As long as you're not compromising the integrity of the system, they all welcome progress and improvements. Now, once you can bring improvements to a system, now you're transitioning to step number nine. Now you're becoming a valued asset within the system. Once you become a valued asset and asset within the system, you are definitely prominent. The system needs you to continue to be effective. This is where you want to be. This is where we all want to be. The only problem with this is I have to caution you. The best time for a letdown is after a victory. So in order to get to be an asset, don't think that you can just chill and relax. Bang! This is where you got to work harder than you've ever worked before. Because not only will all eyes be on you, but everyone else will be trying to dethrone you because they want to be an asset as well. So be cautious whenever you become an asset in the system that you have to work extra hard so that you won't be prone for a letdown. Now this leads us to number 10 take full control of the system and totally maximize it that's number 10 if you go through all of these steps and you can accomplish all these steps then you should be in position at step number 10 to take full control and maximize the systems let me give you two examples of people that have taken full control of this of their individual systems and they have maximized them and they continue to maximize them and take them to greater heights Steve Jobs, God rest his soul. Barack Obama, Sean Carter, AKA Jay-Z. All of these people have conformed to systems, understood the systems, the flow of the systems, taken the systems to ultimate levels, became valued assets within the system and maximized and conquered the systems. This is what we all can do people in and throughout our own lives. Now let me tell you people, this is a great thing for me to be able to do to sit here and talk to you on the Mark Baxter Show where empowerment is unlimited. Let me give you a forecast for what's about to come at y'all. We're about to go strictly interviews for y'all. We're going to be a full-fledged talk show. We may even interview you. And what we're going to do, we're going to get creative. We're going to go to job sites and interview. We're going to be in the studio interviewing. But the ultimate theme of what we're going to do is that we're trying to bring you the information because we want you to be the best you that you can be. Let me tell you peoples, this is real life for us. This is our life. We only get one shot at this. So do it right. Go full speed at it people. This is our only chance. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever adversities you're faced with in your life right now, just think. There's millions of people that would trade their lives for yours in light of the adversity that you're going through. So take yourself out of the misery. Stop tormenting yourself. Stop feeling sorry for yourself because guess what? You got a lot of good to you. You got a lot of positive attributes about you. You got a lot that you can offer someone else. So don't allow that to be diminished. Be all you can be. And if ever you're at a shortage for direction, or understanding just take a second chill right just get an understanding understand who you are go back to your foundation right bang and just go just go because Mark Baxter says so because this is the Mark Baxter show where empowerment is unlimited okay the first part of maximizing the system, the first rule, is you must observe and identify who runs the system. The reason I say that is this, whomever is running the system, obviously they must have some level of effectiveness or else they wouldn't be running the system anymore. The reason why we want to identify who that person is is because you heard the phrase before, like the apple don't fall too far from the tree or um, nothing's new under the sun don't recreate the wheel that's why you want to see who runs the system because you want to take their knowledge you want to see what's effective how they're running and operating the system what's their interest what's their vision as well as their motivation and you want to take it and incorporate it into your style 
and add your characteristics on it and that'll help you become better within the system all right step number two identify how the system works okay what's the flow of the system how does the system flow this is the reason you need to know how the system works any king must first know how to serve any boss must first have been a worker so if you're going to conquer or maximize a system you must first know what it feels like to conform to the system to be a part of that system let me tell you two people that you probably are very familiar with that didn't have the ability to understand how the system work and conform to the system now they had the ability to maximize it and possibly conquer it but because they didn't take heed to who to how the system runs they fell short Allen Iverson all the talent and abilities in the world may go down as one of the best basketball players ever couldn't conform to the system Terrell Owens or should I say Terrell Owens however you pronounce his name couldn't conform to the system now what commonality do these two people have they both wish they had another chance at the system so that they can redeem themselves and be more humble within the system and adhere more to how the system flowed understand how the system works understand how the system flow that's the second step in helping you to maximize the system third step understand the origin and the direction of the system if you don't know where you come from you can't appreciate where you're going if you wasn't a part of the system doing heartaches and pains and struggles it'll be very hard for you to appreciate successes within the system so you must know the origin and the direction of the system number four this is a biggie identify the strengths of the system once you identify the strengths of the system you must compare them and contrast them to your strengths now this is going to tell you whether or not you're equipped to truly conquer a system and how far you can really maximize this system if your strengths aren't in correlation with the strengths of the system there's a small likelihood there's a strong likelihood rather that you won't be able to maximize or conquer that system in any system your strengths must correlate with the system with the strengths of the system that gives you the ability to naturally maximize it because if it's not natural it's going to be very hard for you to maximize it and conquer it all right step number five in maximizing the system you must identify any negative factors that can potentially harm the system and simple this is called risk factors you must do a risk assessment because oftentimes when involved when involving yourself in the system we don't always have the answers or direction as to where to go or how to go in that direction but what's even more important when you don't know what to do or how to do it is to know what not to do and by doing a risk assessment by identifying potential risk factors that could harm the system it will at least keep you safe by knowing what not to do so you won't jeopardize your opportunity and your quest to maximizing and conquering the system number six this is big you must understand your limitations within the system now this is foundational because if you remember in show one identifying your problems strengths and weaknesses it's very difficult for us to accept and embrace our weaknesses because we're afraid of ridicule we're afraid that people will talk about us and see what we're not what we're inadequate at and they will hold it against us like we're, we're exposed but in order to accept your limitations within a system you got to be real with yourself you got to have your foundation intact and this is what you have to do if all my life I've been singing in front of people and they told me mark you sound terrible why do you try to sing and all of a sudden the voice comes out American Idol and the X Factor and I have the audacity to buy a plane ticket and fly to another city to actually audition for this this is called 
self-deception, all right? I'm not in tune and honest with myself because I haven't recognized my limitations. If you do this within a systematic approach, you're conquered. You will never be able to maximize that system. All right, number seven, you must identify who benefits most and who benefits least from the system. This is why you must understand who benefits most. Whomever the beneficiaries of a system are, if you don't come in and be consistent with your ideas to help them continue to benefit, you're going to get more opposition than you can handle. You have to understand who's benefiting most from the system because when you come in and you present some strategic plans to increase the quality of the system, it got to be in the favor of the beneficiaries, board of trustees, whomever you want to say, in order to be considered to add to that system. And the reason you need to know who's, who least benefits from the system is because you want to eventually help the people that's least benefiting from the system without damaging the beneficiary's portion so you can create a win-win situation. All right, number eight, we only got three to go, people. Just stay with me. It's, very, it's good knowledge and it's very insightful. It's very helpful for you to impact it and to incorporate it into your life. Now, this is the thing about these systematic rules. All of these rules won't apply to every system. Some systems aren't sophisticated enough to implement all 10 steps in. But what you want to do, you want to use the process of elimination and go down the list and see what's applicable for what situation and what system, and that's what you apply to it.